the biggest thing that we're going to be going over is just, of course, trying to be as efficient as possible, creating more profit, lowering expenses, lowering overhead with uh, team members, salaries, everything like that. And the first thing is with materials. So as we've talked in past about breaking out that P&L very detailed, right? So knowing exactly what your cost of goods sold are, knowing exactly how much expenses are in those detailed categories, start to separate them out by division. <clears throat> so if it's a landscape, if it's mowing supplies, if it's fertilizing supplies, if it's irrigation parts, whatever that is, now's the time to look at those, those items that you're purchasing and seeing what's out there. So a good thing that you can do is a, reach out to your current vendors. This is something that I never knew until probably a couple of years ago and ask them for better pricing. I mean, there's there's that opportunity out there to ask for better pricing if you buy in bulk. If you get it early, what else can they do for you? Sometimes it's even just free shipping, but that free shipping eliminates you having to go to the vendor in the first place. So as far as materials go, separate it out by the division, find what you can get first, and then if your vendor can't provide it for you right now, I mean, now is an awkward time in history where we're going to have to go to other vendors. There's no more uh, Ranger Pro and Roundup and stuff like that even available for us because it's all going to agriculture. So find out what other opportunities there are, what other materials there are by just searching the web, search all other vendors in the nearby bigger cities. So that's something that's been huge, trying to buy and allocate all that stuff before the season starts can sometimes save you anywhere from five to 12, 18%. I know for us, like with irrigation supplies, we were able to save 18% on all of our backflows and copper by buying it in bulk last year. This year it's gone down a little bit from that, but just by taking that order in, in the, before the season starts, gets their cash flow going too. And sometimes you don't even have to pay right away. It could be paid by June. So utilize that. You can negotiate a lot of stuff with your vendors especially paying later too. I didn't even know about that until I started asking, hey, we'll take it now, but can I pay you in the next three months? So a lot of people are happy with that as well. Um, that's material wise. As far as let's move into the shop a little bit. So warehouse optimization, you know, this is something else that I encourage you to do with your team, your management team, your coworkers. Um, start documenting every single thing around the warehouse if it's materials, if it's where your crew members are starting the day, what's where they're finishing the day, document each one separate by the division that they're in and then break down and make a note for each. So what can we build or buy to make this whole area easier to operate? What's the least amount of moving parts that need to be going on? Is there something that can be um, reduced for waste or what can we use the waste for in other areas? So once you find out that time frame too, it's you'll start to see different, different things. So an example of this is almost back several years ago too, when we used to have all of our team members start at the exact same time. And we kind of touched on this a little bit last week too, but you start timing that stuff, right? So you've got 40 people showing up at the exact same time that it's inefficient. So can you have your foreman start 30 minutes before? Can one person start a little bit before, fuel everything up or get everything collected and then everybody's ready to go when they come in at seven or eight or whatever time they start. So just by documenting the time of those divisions as well is something big, but brainstorming ideas for each of those and just jumping on Google. I mean, that's something that wasn't even an option for me when I was first starting out 18, 20 years ago. Like we had to figure it out, ask around, couldn't find anything, make it very difficult for us to produce and then years, years later, we found, oh, shoot, there's this one thing I could have bought for $200 that could have saved us thousands and thousands of dollars. <clears throat> Another thing, too, is with fuel. So I know some of you guys, you might be in a warehouse, you might be at a house, but if you can get fuel delivered to your office or to your warehouse, if it's available, um, you have to check with the landlord because there's insurance stipulations as well. But there's a lot of companies that will deliver, provide the tanks, sometimes for 0% financing and fill it up whenever you need it. So eliminating that drive time as well is huge. In addition to just fuel, there's ways to pre-mix. So a lot of people that I talk to are also just taking that, you know, 50-50 mixed oil out every single day they're going out. But if you can mix all of that stuff together, put it in a 55 gallon drum so that way you just open, tip and pour 
into your two and a half gallon containers, you're eliminating all of that time, even just to mix it one can at a time. And also eliminating if somebody's going to make mix it too rich or too light. So it's going to throw it all off. And since we ended up doing that, I mean, we've only gone through three carburetors out of all of our crews, all of our divisions in the last probably five years. So it keeps it exactly where you need it to be. And I'll send some, I'll show some pictures of what we do too in the Facebook group, kind of go over that a little bit too. Um, and even just like a drum rack. So if you're buying oil in by the quart or by the gallon, you can get that stuff all delivered, 55 gallon drums, which is way cheaper than buying it individual. And you can put those on that rack, you tip pour it, figure out exactly what you need, nothing wasted, the same with washer fluid. As far as let's say landscaping and other small tools, if you can figure out a way to make all of the tools, all the machinery, all the hand tools, all standard. So keep the exact same mower, keep the exact same trimmer, keep the exact same blower, hand tools, hand rakes, all that stuff exactly the same. You can buy all that stuff in bulk as well, but then you also have one type of air filter. You have one type of oil filter. And there's opportunities there to buy all that stuff early on in the year as well, but that's without having to switch it over. I mean, if you have a John Deere mower for this size and you've got a, a Hustler for that size and you got a Skag for that size, that's three different things you need for just materials and for maintenance purposes that it's just costing you more money. You have no leverage when you're buying like one-offs, 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 but if you can leverage all together, let's buy 50 of these air filters and then you are saving in bulk and you don't have to worry about it. You know, it's all the same. Um, another thing too is we've talked about is sharpening blades. So everybody here believes mowing. So by just simply purchasing an extra set for all the mowers, you can have one dedicated person sharpen all of those blades. So that way when it's time for changing blades out once a week or twice a week or once a month, whatever you guys do, then you don't have the time of people waiting on a blade to be sharpened just to swap it out. So you sharpen 50 blades. And then when it's time to change blades, you just automatically switch them. And then any type of downtime, if it's a night, if it's early morning, if somebody's looking for something to do, then go in and sharpen all those blades. But that saves an immense amount of time, um, even with what we're doing too, with one person can do it if it's a rain day and set it up for the whole month. So you don't have to worry about what if, what if, what if, if you get pushed back, you don't have to even think about that at all. And even with parts bins. So this is something else we actually did recently, but for, have you guys tried changing recoils on your mowers or blowers or anything like that? Yep, Brian. So this is something that A, I wouldn't even recommend doing because nowadays it's getting cheaper to do. But if you're trying to change that out in the field or you drive back to the office warehouse just to swap it out, just by having spare recoils, if it's on a pull string, like on a, on a, um, a trimmer or blower or even a mower, just to buy one extra of each type of mower you have. So that way, all you need to do is take off those five bolts on the top, put on a new one, bolt it back down, and then you can take that broken one to the, your, your uh, mechanic, your maintenance person, whoever does that stuff. So you don't ever have to worry about it. So just those five bolts, I think it's a 10 millimeter and swap it out in the field. You don't have to drive anywhere, it's ready to go. And that's maybe a hundred dollar part that'll save you hours of downtime. So just keeping one of those on your truck is gonna save so much time that um, it'll pay for itself in no time. That's and a that's a decent idea because my guys seem to hate the 30 inch push mowers. Every time they want to use one, they, they break the strings. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. we have one for every type of mower. I mean, and every, every truck has one. So that way they've all got their toolbox. They all have, they have the exact wrenches that they need just for that mower, right. Or those tools, but then it el eliminates three guys driving all the way back to the warehouse, no matter where they're at, just to swap out that recoil. So if you can find every piece of machinery that you have that here's the typical stuff that breaks, let's set that in a toolbox for each crew. Here's the exact tools they need just to allocate. It eliminates not only labor, but your opportunity cost. I mean, A, they're driving back, they're wasting an hour or two, but they could have done eight more houses, right? So you're actually losing way more than just that time that you paid everybody to come back. 
So finding all that stuff and making that list that you can keep in the truck in the beginning of the season. Okay, here's this tool, here's this tool, here's this, here's this. Maybe it's an impact just to change blades if there's extra blades. Here's like a small jack. And even for a jack, you don't even really need any more. You can just drive a one tire up on your ramp of the trailer. So a lot of that stuff is easy to, to purchase ahead of time to eliminate any headaches down the road. Hopefully you never have to use it, but I'd rather spend the money knowing that there's insurance than have to spend a lot of money in the back end. So with all of that stuff, and even um, throughout the season, if you can dedicate just one person to do that, just to keep track of everything, to go in once a month, check if everything's in the toolboxes, check if all the machinery is working properly. I mean, we're all going to get a lot more busy, right? There's going to be more stuff put on our plate here in the next couple of weeks. Um, so if you can have a dedicated person, especially if you have a foreman that's wanting more responsibility to set aside that stuff for them, here's your checklist every single week or every two weeks, let's go through everything. Let's make sure everything's in the right spot. Let's check all the fluids. Let's do all that stuff. It's one more thing to take off your plate. And for efficiency as well out of the warehouse. So we've talked about this a little bit in the past too, but by fueling up at the end of the day for foreman, we talked about that last week, but also the Monday through Thursday mowing schedule. And I don't know where if anybody else has a bunch of rain in their areas too, but just by doing Monday through Thursday for 10 hour days, you have Friday then as a backup day. Well, now on that Friday too, if it, everything is already caught up, that main form and those main people can do all those things we just talked about, you know, changing all the blades, wash the trucks, clean equipment, scrape decks. They can clean the office, clean the shop, do all that stuff. They can go on, uh, go to your customers and see if there's anything else to upsell. So give those people still 40 hours or whatever it is you're trying to allocate towards them for Monday through Thursday, but then have that Friday as a floater. And that's when you can see who wants to step up, who wants to put an extra work to by having that dedicated day. Yeah, it might be overtime for some of those people, but I would rather give that person overtime on a Friday knowing that we've completed everything that needs to be completed on the first four days. <clears throat> Does that make sense? So that's something we did a long time ago and it saved us probably thousands and thousands of dollars and headaches from not trying to pull people in on the weekends. As far as the trucks themselves go or the equipment. So with with fertilizing equipment, with irrigation equipment. I mean, all this stuff has ways to be optimized. And I'll, like I said, I'll put some more pictures in the uh, Facebook group too, but simple things that can be added to the front of a truck to put a fertilized spreader on that might cost a hundred bucks, but it's not thrown in the back of the truck. I mean, with all the companies now making trailer, ra uh, tr trimmer racks, you know, blower racks, all that stuff, it's easier to keep it in one dedicated place Instead of having guys just throw it in the back of the truck, it gets damaged. You set it on the side of the truck if they're leaving because they don't know where a dedicated spot is and it gets ran over. I mean, I've been there. It sucks. You spend a couple thousand dollars a year just replacing stuff that people leave out. But if there's dedicated spots for every trailer, every truck bed, no matter what it is, it still will save time in the long run just by spending that money for an investment right now. Um, even with the fruit spreaders. I mean, a lot of people see that there is opportunity for those right on fruit spreaders, right? But we didn't see that there was anything efficient or that could carry the heavier duty ones now. So we ended up making the new fruit haulers that you can run, um, hitch on the back of the truck with dual hitches, but we had to make that. I mean, we're lucky we have a two in-house mechanics that we can fabricate and create all that stuff, but that still started with an inefficiency of how do we make something better? How can we go about making everything be on one truck without having a trailer attached to a fertilizer rig. So you have to always think, no matter what it is, if it's a division, if it's just one person's duty, if it's one piece of machinery, document everything on it. How can it be improved? What can we get rid of? What can we buy to make it more efficient? Because without thinking every single step of the process on production, we can't increase profits. We can't reduce expenses. So we have to constantly think of that stuff day in and day out. There shouldn't be a day when you don't think about that stuff because the day that you, you don't, something's going to break and it's going to cost thousands of dollars more. So just always have in the back of your head. There's tons of ways. And I, like I said, I'll put as many pictures as you guys want to see of what we currently use. 
in the group. Um, there's tons of things, if it's trailers, if it's trucks, if it's equipment, if it's parts bins, but everything has its place, everything has its purpose and everything has its optimization um, responsibility.